Hi, my name is Tadeusz Pechalski and today let's take a look at the cheapest and I really mean the cheapest, not the best, but really the cheapest and the simplest way to have a radio transmission between two electronical devices, for example Arduinos. The cheapest, and by the cheapest I really mean the cheapest possible, probably the cheapest possible option to have the some kind of wireless transmissions between two electronic devices like Arduinos is what I heard right now in my head. You can buy the pair. This one is called FS1000A and this one is called XYMK5V the other stupidest name ever from china for like crazy price for uh, around one maybe slightly below two bucks per a pair and in theory and in theory there are great devices that allows you to transmit something from this because this one called the fs1000 uh, is a transmitter from this one you transmit something over the 433 megahertz wave radios radio waves to this one which is the receiver and it's called xymk5v stupidest name ever um, but there are there are at least a few buts compared towards about those devices this one and this comes of course without any antenna so if you want to have any range really any range you have to buy yourself at least a few antennas i have here the helical wire copper wire helical 433 megahertz antenna soldered to the ant pad and this requires a voltage from 3 to 12 volts uh, will work just fine on 5 volts but the range really depends on the voltage because the higher voltage the more power it emits and this works as the 0-1 device uh, there is a VCC and a GND if you apply the VCC with let's say 12 volts and a GND with a ground of course and every time a signal will appear on the ATAD which if you read it <laughs> backwards it's data because when someone made a, <laughs> a stencil for the silk mask they just got this wrong and it's not ATAD but it should be data so every time a high signal appears on the, let's say 5 volt 5 or 3.3 should also trigger it appears on it it tries starts to emitting just a carrier wavelength on the 3 433 megahertz and that's all there is no encoding coding uh, compression uh, CRC validation nothing one appears on ATAD and it transmits the one if you there, there is no one there is zero or the leg hangs loose it's not transmitting anything on the other hand the receiver and this is only the receiver uh, requires always 5 volts you cannot fit it with anything else than the 5 volts because it will not work if you try to apply something above the 5 volts then it will let's say be it will not live very long of course it's also shipped without the antenna so you have to get yourself small antenna if you do not have those um, rubber thingies rubber duckies springy antennas you can just solder here 16.5 centimeters of a copper wire and it will be just fine this one works slightly different way because uh, let's take a look at the pinout there is a gnd vcc you apply 5 volts to the vcc and the ground to ground and every time it will detect something coming on the 433 megahertz like for example sent from this one it will put one of one of those data here they put data <sighs> ATAD okay it will put one on one of those uh, legs if you it will not detect one anything on the carrier wave of 433 megahertz then it will just put zero it will just pull the, the leg low and in theory it should work fine uh, unfortunately it doesn't uh, because there are at least a few problems mm, well it works kind of uh, last two years ago i got the range of almost 200 meters with those so yeah if you want to you can if you really want to you can have some range with those devices but they because they are let's say analog on off 
keying working you need some kind to encode your data you want to send from device number to the device number one or the other way for example there is the virtual wire library or radio head library you can use them on arduinos that will handle the transmission protocols for those things but still they are one way devices this is only a transmitter and this is only a receiver if you want to have two-way communication you have to have two pairs and handle them as well but the biggest really the biggest problem with this thing is that the sensitivity uh, is not constant uh, because if this if it does not detect an input radio signal it starts to boost the uh, sensitivity and then at one point it just received total crap uh, also you cannot uh, transmit the data too slow on this because this also cannot put the one the high state on one of the output legs for long and done if i remember correctly uh 300 milliseconds i think I, but I will show you later in the second part of the video so not only you have to use external libraries to encode it uh, there is no way to have any really any like like check if the data is there one-way transmission is very pro problematic you never know if it worked did not work if uh, you did not get any signal for too long it starts to output you random crap so it's fine to just have some fun to play build very simple very really very 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 simple device but if you want something better than my advice avoid their much better uh, devices like LoRa or, or, or anything like that. But now, now I will show you some of the experiments I made with those two, not exactly those two pieces, but those two devices, when I will show you what's happening when you are getting the signal just fine from the transmitter to the receiver, and what's happening when you do not, let's say, uh, you... What happens when this loses signal for too long because for example this is off or is uh, not transmitting for any reason and how the crap is showing up on the output pins of this and uh, and and yeah so let's go to the oscilloscope and the signal generator this is the experiment i have prepared for you here on the breadboard i have the fs1000 transmitter and uh, xymk5v receiver connected i have a signal uh, generator that will drive the transmitter to transmit some kind of crop into the receiver and the scope with two channels configured so we can compare what's the input and what's the output uh, from the receiver the yellow line the yellow line shows when the transmitter is transmitting every time we have a rising slope that means the transmitter is transmitting something and every time the blue line will also have this bump over here the peak that means the receiver received something interesting so um, right now everything is off we can only see that uh, there is input signal the input signal with the fre frequency of 5 hertz and 20 percent duty cycle so let's turn it on it's working more or less if we zoom in then okay if we zoom in that every time the transmitter receives one the transmitter the receiver also outputs one because we were able to output anything what will happen when we will uh, let's say disable the transmitter you see this is also what i've been mentioning every time the receiver stops receiving any radio signal for a period of time around 500 milliseconds it starts to boost the sensitivity and instead of getting really valuable data it just starts to pick up some noise and and um, ugly peaks of the data that's not really there i'm also living in the let's say the rf rich environment because there is the uh, there is a hospital nearby and a lot of equipment works uh, on the 453 megahertz band so this is probably also why but okay let's turn this on and let's see what will be happening when i will be increasing the frequency from 5 hertz to something bigger at one kilohertz let's zoom in 
At 1 kHz it's still um, working quite nicely. Uh, there are no visible problems but slowly the race time of the receiver edge is it's not flat, that means that something, let's say it takes time, there is some capacitance, it takes time for this to start outputting anything, but this is 1 kHz, still not that bad. At 2 kHz it's more visibly shifted, more shifted at 3 kHz, look what's happening, how much the, the signal, receiver signal is shifted because of the some capacitance and inductance inside of the receiver. At 5 kHz it's more or less still fine, 6, 7, 9, at 10 kilohertz, look, look what's happening. And the receiver signal is no longer stable. Artifact starts to appear and as soon as I will go to around 20 kilohertz, it's more or less a nightmare. You see, the receiver absolutely lost the ability to receive a proper signal. When I will start backing down, then at 10, 12... My suggestion, do not really go above 10 kilohertz right now, but really something around 5 kilohertz is really work, is real life limit, even on the shortest ranges. The higher you want to go, the lower the frequency has to be. But this was one. This was one that was showing us what's happening when there is high frequency signal put into the mix. But what will be happening? I think I have to hit auto. No, why the scope is not working? Uh, that's why it's not working. Scope, come on. Ah, yes, now we are talking, now we are talking. Right now we are back to the 5 Hz. Let's start lowering the frequency, 2 Hz. At 2 Hz it still looks fine. At 1 Hz, whoa, you see? Whoa. What's happening? What's happening? This is exactly the same case that's happening uh, when um, the, there is no input signal on the radio. Because as soon as the receiver is not receiving anything for around 500 milliseconds, it starts to boost the sensitivity. And here, uh, you see, the, the one, the signal goes here, goes here, then after we can actually i think we can measure this one after uh, let's go here no okay no okay and sometimes this thing is really irritating me after around 400 500 milliseconds start to boost the sensitivity and uh, instead of getting nice signal we are getting those kind of thingies that means that it, those modules cannot be really used for a button uh, it cannot be used as a button because if you push it with the button then the receiver is already in high state high sensitivity state will pick up different kind of crap and actually will not work anymore but this is one this is one the other the other thing is what's happening when the duty of the signal the peak the one will be slightly shorter let me change it and let's start increasing the duty cycle of the signal 30 percent 40 percent look Okay, we are here, look what's happening. Not only the strange noise appears at the before the, the one goes into the receiver, also the strange noise appears over here. This is because the receiver... Uh, okay, this is because the receiver cannot really hold the one of the output for too long. And the max amount of time it can do it is around 300 milliseconds not too much not too much so you cannot transmit too fast you cannot transmit too slow you cannot really use it with the button implementation you need some kind of filtering how to do the filtering on the output of this thing um, for example with the capacitor what I have here is the capacitor this one is how big this is 100 microfarads and I will just now install this thing parallel to the output and we will build a very simple very crude 
low pass filter hoping oh okay yeah with the capacitor at the output of the thing it's better it's better the spikes are off but still um, the raising time is visible the falling time is visible it's still not very nice but with the capacitor at the exit of xy mk 5v you can let's say improve the noise handling of the of the thing it won't be pretty on low frequencies but it will be working okay that's all for today mm, in the next uh, few weeks i will try to record at least one more video about radio models you can use at home but no though not those cheapy changas cheapy crappy things that you should really avoid you can play with them but they are not good for the real life applications because they suck and uh, thank you very much for watching until the next one bye bye Oh, and thumbs up and subscribe and thank you. Bye.